But that sounds like you're still clarifying his gaslighting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it was. Like, you, you cheated. Know, what, what, why are you mad at me? Welcome to the Real and Relatable Podcast, where no topic is off limits. We're the girlfriends that keep it real and give you different perspectives because we know one way isn't always the right way. Hey guys, welcome to the Real and Relatable Podcast. I'm LC. This is Doshe Vida. I'm Ma. My name is Cash. So today we've got an exciting topic for you. We had a viewer visit our website and submitted a topic, and we encourage you all to do that as well. Thank you to this viewer. He or she asked about communication in a relationship, especially after the honeymoon phase. When you get into you know, tough conversations with your partner, how do you handle it? So we're going to touch a little bit on that. But to start off, guys... What's your favorite phase in a relationship? I do like the honeymoon stage, but I do feel like that's a little bit sweet yeah, and smothered over where you don't really get to see a lot of the real things yet, you know? I agree. It's it's fun and exciting. Mm-hmm. It's also really nerve-wracking because it it's like you don't know this person at all. You're on your best behavior. You're really you know, trying to shine and yeah. you also only want to see all the good stuff from this person. So it's like, it's a lot of fun, but nerve wracking. And then my s- probably favorite would be when you're more settled into the relationship after mm-hmm. three, four years. Yeah. Yeah. When things are comfortable and you feel secure. I like the honeymoon phase too, but I really like um, after two years when you've already kind of got You've gotten to know each other. You probably already had a few ups and downs already at that point. And it's more serious mm. and you're more comfortable with each other. It just feels, it feels a little bit more like home at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just... So do you guys remember like, okay, so maybe your most recent or your most serious relationship, um, that that first argument, do you remember what it was about and how you handled it? I think it was my first, I saw my first ex, when we were young, we were like 18, 19. I don't remember our first argument, but I do remember one specific argument because it was a really big argument. It was kind of like a blowout argument. Mm -hmm. And I was so young. I didn't know how to handle uh, communication at that time. I was such a brat. Really? Yeah. I was such a brat. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't hear him out at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the whole time... He, he was trying to talk to me I was just ignoring him yeah the whole time and then and then I would just get and then I just got upset and I just started crying and then I st- basically started throwing a tantrum <laughs> oh wow yeah and I was like and I think back about it and I'm like gosh I was such a little brat I'm like I think I'm not that person anymore was this but I, I, we've if, gone through that phase all of us uh, I've been there yeah but I was like 18 yeah you know? like I don't I don't know what it's like to have an argument, you know, with a with a significant other. All I know is I cared about what I wanted and that's all that mattered, you know? Yeah, when you're 18, 19, it's forgivable. It's different. <laughs> it's, it's different. Yeah. yeah. We're all brats when we're 18. <laughs> so you, yeah. you're Sometimes not wrong. Sometimes we're still brats yeah. depending on the situation. Yeah. Right. But brat. do you have anything not like... Yet. No, um, it's hard them. for me to pinpoint one with my... Uh, my ex that I was with for like 15 years because we had so many arguments and all our arguments just kind of escalated. And he was not somebody that was really good at uh, conversing. And and so whenever I would confront an issue or a situation, he literally sits there in silence. Oh. And so it's like talking to a wall. And so I'm repeating myself and I'm, asking question and we're literally sitting there in what feels like 10 minutes of silence okay before he even answers a, a question and he doesn't even really answer the question it's more like he answers the question with a question oh uh, okay so it was very hard to communicate with him when we had any type of arguments so got it, it. kind of got to the point where i just stop okay i, I just stopped having like basically arguments with him because it no. got nowhere. Got it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Wow. Did I send you that meme with the guy explaining to the wall? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my okay, god! I'll send you that meme. I mean, that's probably that's what it that's what it felt like. 
Oh, there's what, a meme what? on Instagram that was like, and you will probably argue on uh, TikTok first, but there's a meme I saw on Instagram where the guy's like, the, 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 the saying was, when you're trying to explain how you feel and all that happened to somebody who is very toxic and the guy's like talking and he's talking to a brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's what it was like yeah. talking to him, though. But do you guys feel like, and sorry, I'll let you answer your question, but I wanted to tag on before I forget that, like, most most guys are not that talkative back. No? No. I feel like most of the guys they date are so, not so this, talkative. So there was this guy that I, we didn't date, but the guy I was talking to, we're still friends. I remember our first, it wasn't an argument, but our first, like, serious conversation he actually was, he's actually a pretty good communicator. Yeah, um, nice. Because he was very, like, straightforward and honest. Like, I I don't like that you drunk text me and drunk call me. Oh <laughs> like, he was very... He, I like him. He was, like, he was like very... <laughs> he's cool. He was, like, very, he, he was very honest. He was like, he was like yeah. I don't like that you drunk text me and drunk, drunk call me. I, I already told you I don't I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, he goes, so so when you did that, that's why I... That's why I stop texting you and I wait until you, you know, and until like, until basically you cool down that, yeah. and then I'll address it with mm-hmm. you. So he actually was like really good communicator. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Do you yeah. remember your, um, uh, like one of your first fights with your exes then Cash? I recently had been with somebody and we both had, I think, graduated to, a, a point where we can talk to each other in a healthy manner and express ourselves in how we feel like. I'm, I'm trying to remember arguments. I'm pretty logical, so I I typically don't um, have arguments. But there are times when if I don't address something, like then I'll I'll blow up. I can't remember anything specifically though. But the person I'm with now, it was so funny where it's a it's a pretty new relationship, right? So I was saying to him, I was like, oh, my God, I wonder how our first argument was going to be. And I said to him, how are you going to react if we get into an argument? And he said that he would probably just not say anything, just like clam up and just like, yeah, shut down. Um, and I was like, oh, is that good or bad? I was like, oh, no, I hope you you're able to like communicate how you're feeling to me, you know? Okay. But I think it's nice to, like, address that. Like, how are you going to handle our first argument or any of our arguments? What kind of communicator are you? Mm-hmm. Well, how did you feel when he said he clamps up? <laughs> I know, is that good or bad? Um, You know, I was like, oh, I mean, I, it was good to know, you know, okay. because I think it gives me, like, visibility to how he's going to be um, when there's a problem. So then I know if he gets quiet maybe maybe he is not understanding or is upset about something so then i just need to be more mindful and 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 ask it's going to be on me right how i communicate with him right knowing how he is okay yeah that's how i took it okay it was good to learn that and then how do i get through to him yeah. if he's like that you so question do you would you prefer your man to clam up or blow up if you had to choose one I think on a repeat up and shut down. It's better than blow up. Yeah. How about you? I I don't know. I feel like I would rather have them blow up. Really? Why? Yeah. Wow. Why? I think it's just I because I already I've already been in that relationship where climbing up up and and don't say anything. I hate that. Oh. Why? It drives it drives me insane. Like I because it doesn't seem like they're understanding. Oh. Yeah. It it drives me insane, and then I get then I get lost in my own thoughts. Yeah, and then I start making up scenarios mm. in my own head yeah. about why he's upset because he I don't know why he's upset oh, and I'm okay. sitting over here trying to figure it that out. Not confirming anything. Yeah, yeah. so I rather you just I rather you blow up and tell me what you're upset about. Mm. That's a good point. Okay. Give me yeah, something. That's a good, good Give me something point. to work with, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, that's a good point. I mean, I prefer n- uh, neither one of them. <laughs> uh, I prefer never to argue with. <laughs> yeah, I prefer you to be perfect and yes. tell me how you feel. Honestly, like my my ex, you know, obviously it didn't work out for for reasons, but he is a really good communicator, um, and I've le- I learned so much from him. I'll be upset over something, and then I'll explain it to him, and he's like, "Oh, okay, that's that's what you like. That's what you prefer. Then I'll just do it." You know, like simple example. 
dishes or whatever, you know, or like organizing things a certain way or hmm. whatever. He'll be like, oh, okay, then I'll just do it, Very cool. you know? Yeah. And it was so eye-opening for me for him to just be like, I'm not going to take anything personally, anything that you're feeling, that you desire, that you want. If it's not negatively impacting me, I will do it, you know? And I thought that was amazing. I was, and, and I walked away from that relationship learning how to give um, – a lot more and learning how to like sort of like put my emotions aside if somebody wants something a certain way then just do it so the way he yeah. reacted like oh if that's what you need then i'll just do it yeah like what did that teach you how did that make you feel great like he's a great listener and a great partner someone who um doesn't take things personally or emotionally or does it is not trying to win mm -hmm. or is not trying to say, no, I prefer it this way. So it needs to be this there's way. No ego. You know, yeah, there's no ego. Um, and that that's really amazing um, to be able to communicate in that way where you're listening to what that person yeah. wants and then you're trying to service it and provide yeah. it, yeah. you know. So now I try to do that. But I learned it from him, yeah. from seeing the way he reacted to me in that's that way. Special. Yeah. Yeah. So... I mean, I, like I said, you know, like I am quiet and then I blow up, you know, and now I'm learning to not blow up and learning to communicate what I want and also learn what my partner wants so that I can just give them that because it, if it doesn't hurt me, why would I right. not do it? Right. You know, what, what did you guys learn from your relationships about communication? You said you were a brat. Oh, I was, I was. That was now. I was young. Yeah, <laughs> I learned never to be a brat again because uh, <laughs> karma comes back tenfold uh, for being a brat. Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like sometimes I'm still a brat, though. Sometimes, sometimes if I want something a certain way, like I'm gonna make it known, though. I never got to be a brat after that. <laughs> to be really oh, honest. Oh yeah. <laughs> after that, you took care of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My karma from being a brat was everyone after that was uh, they were the brat <laughs> yeah. yeah no i don't know if i really i think i own the only thing i really learned about um my long-term relationship um uh, was how i did how i don't like to be communicated to and how i don't mm -hmm. want to be that's so to good too though because i know that i don't want a partner that doesn't communicate mm -hmm. who turns into a brick wall yeah. when we get into an argument i'll have someone who who can't be honest uh, mm -hmm. when we're having a serious conversation yeah. so it taught me things that i don't want yeah not necessarily how to be a better communicator that's also yeah. important yeah because you yeah. you know how you are right and you're choosing the partner that allows you to be who you are and communicate the way you communicate whatever way that is yeah like so that's good too mm -hmm. yeah what about it helps you like unravel your own factors of importance of what is important to you you're you're non-negotiables you know yeah um well, yeah what about you or, or what what ha what has been some of your takeaways um in you know, working through communication issues. And so a few things that I've learned, I don't know, I would say maybe throughout the past six years or so is to be very vocal and understand what it is, I, what that I want and actually to to express what I want to get it. Because I think that my previous mistakes was that I reacted emotionally where if I was displeased, I would, I would get upset. Or, you know, um, if I was frustrated, sometimes I would shut down or I would want to leave the relationship. Or if I if I wanted something, I didn't know how to express it. But I've learned more recently, like if I want something, sometimes it's better to encourage it. If I want something and there, someone is doing something, it's better if I say things like, hey, you did this for me today thank you so much and celebrate it and encourage it, you know, kind of like at the workplace. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's, that's I an mean, interesting. No, because like, the thing is like when, when, yeah. when I'm, when I'm at the workplace and I'm like dealing with people in HR, it's like, you have to do things so safely and you're just like, Hey, good job. You did this today. This is amazing. Keep doing that. Mm -hmm. But I think when it comes to our personal relationships, at least for me, I'm speaking for me. 
I, if, if I'm too emotionally invested, I'm just like, what the hell? You're supposed to know better, you know, like blah, 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 whatever. You can encourage certain behaviors. You can tell someone certain things about what you want, but you cannot get emotional about it and, and get reactive. Both sexes, m men and women, or whatever you identify as, we all need to be encouraged. We all, when we're doing the right things, when we hear positive reinforcement, it works. Yeah. Everyone wants to hear that, um, oh, I did this thing right that he or she liked, you know, and I'm going to continue yeah. to do that. And yeah. uh, if somebody does something that you don't like, you want to clearly communicate it in a soft way um, and then see how this person reacts and how this person um can adapt and change yeah. right yeah yeah because i think when two people come together you're you're learning each other's habits and you've got to adjust you know and if you're not adjusting to them and they're not adjusting to you then that's going to be a very toxic unhealthy unhappy relationship mm -hmm. like you guys you have to know how to you know um give and take yeah you know? yeah I, I was going to say, you know, I think when, especially when you're in an argument with with a significant other, you know, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of emotions involved and yeah. you are going to, there are going to be situations where you're going to blow up. Yeah. But I really like how you approach it because I know you've told me about an argument with an ex that you had where you're like, you know what, give me a minute. Let me, oh, yeah. let, yes. let me, let me, let me process yeah. it. I think I like that approach yeah. because... I am somebody who is very reactive, like when, immediate. Yeah, okay. where where in the moment I am, I'm gonna say what what's on my mind, and yeah. I am going to probably overreact and be dramatic, and um, then regret it later. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah. and yeah. then yeah. and then in a, in like two three minutes after I had time to rethink, it, then I have to backtrack yeah. and uh, like apologize and like say what I really meant to yeah. say. So it would be better if I would have just be like you know what give me give me a second to yeah. think through whatever it is that we're arguing yeah about. it really helps i mean i think because i'm the type of person that kind of just holds things inside and let things fester until i blow up so that's not good and i realize it's because i don't really know what's bothering me sometimes like it bothers me but i can't pinpoint you can't it put your finger yeah, on it. yeah yeah so it's really important for me to just like think about it and sit yeah. with it first and if it shows on my face and if my partner brings it up I'll I'll say I you know I am a little bit upset I, I think you did something that made me upset but I, I'm I'm still kind of sitting with it to try to understand what it really is that is uh, making me unhappy mm -hmm. and when I'm ready then I will um you know, have that conversation with you. And they really respect that because I'm not blowing up and I'm not crying I'm and not able to explain myself and not clearly articulate like the issue because I think men are really simple and if they really understand what the problem is they're gonna try their best yeah, to yeah. fix it and to address it yeah well, well most if, of you the know, time, if, if they love and respect yes, you, yes. Love and respect <laughs> you, yes. Um, most I'm okay. I'm generalizing here, but I think us as women, or most of us at least, uh, it's it's difficult for us to explain what it is that's bothering us, yeah. Yeah. and that doesn't help the situation. We have so many layers. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, like the emotions. That's why I'm like, I could blow up, or I can just shut down and not say anything, and then let it build up for years and let other things pile on and I start to add things onto my the mental list until I get really upset and just blow up and leave or whatever mm -hmm. and I've just like gotten better at communicating because I don't want that to happen mm -hmm. so when you're taking this time to think it through are you like not talking to him or no I, like, I, how long are you taking? no when I say that um I usually do it within a couple hours oh okay. because I want to address it immediately um, so I'm using that time, at least an hour to think about it. I'm still, you know, hanging out and whatever. And, you know, while I'm thinking through it and then when I'm ready, I, I talk about it. I don't wait for days. Okay. If I if I say to him directly, I am upset right now and I just need to think about this. I want to address it as soon as possible. Mm, okay. And so as I'm sitting and thinking about, OK, so he did this and then he did that. So where in this area did I get upset at and it? It was because he said this, but then he didn't do this, you know. So I'm like basically retracing the step 
of the whole situation, every single thing he said and did and I said and did and where that trigger happened, you know, so that I can say, hey, this is the reason why. And I'll give you guys the full situation. He's divorced. He's got two kids. And so the kids are with a mom and their one kid is misbehaving. He told me that he's got to call the kid to talk to the kid and um, tell him you can't behave that way. You can't talk to your mother that way and just have a conversation with him. And we were on our way to brunch. And so because we had to wait in line, um, he was like, let me go and make this phone call. Uh, and I'm like, okay, sure. So I'm waiting. He goes back into the car to make the phone call. We get called. So I take the table and I'm sitting there alone for like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes while he is sitting in the car talking on the phone, right? So when he comes back and he tells me, oh, yeah, he wasn't there. The son wasn't there, but I was talking to my ex and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And that I just started to get things. really upset. Yeah. Yeah. Because if he would have been there, if yeah. he would have been, hey, honey, sorry, thanks for waiting for me. Yeah. I, I got done with talking to my son. Yeah. That's different. That's different. But if his son was not there and he was like, hey, sorry, yeah, my, my son ex. wasn't there, but I was talking yeah. to my ex. Yeah. That, that, that changed And I, things. yeah, I got really upset, really quiet. And for some reason, I didn't know what would upset me, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you're thinking about this situation, it seems really clear. But in the moment, I was like, I was just like, super upset yeah and didn't really know why yeah right and so he was like oh you know like what's going on you're quiet I was like I'm actually kind of upset right now and um I just need a few minutes to think about this right so we had lunch everything was normal and then we head back into the car and the ride home whatever chit-chatting but I was still in my mind thinking walking through the whole situation yeah. and then as we parked I said hey I, I want to address what happened and um, I, I walked through everything. And the reason why I am upset is because you're displaying a behavior that tells me that you don't know how to prioritize me um, in a moment where it, it's my time, right? Yeah. You're having a conversation with your ex-wife of when you were supposed to have the conversation with your son. He wasn't there. And even if she wanted to talk, because when he came back, he's like, oh, yeah. She wouldn't let me off the phone and she was complaining and I had to calm her down and blah, blah, blah. You yeah, know? yeah. So I was like, you know, you as the man in the relationship have to be able to say, hey, I'm sorry. I have something right now. So I will give you a call back when I'm done. Yeah. And you can tell me the full story. All right. But I was calling to talk to my son. And if he's not there, I need to go back into this um, um, other thing event that I have going on right. you know you as the man you did not create that space and um you did not put your feet down and you took my time for granted mm -hmm. that's what upset me yeah you know at any moment if you said hey I need to call to talk to my ex-wife or what do no problem but because that wasn't the case and you took my time for granted that's really what upset me I need a man who's going to be able to say, I have something else and be able to prioritize, you know? Mm -hmm. So I had that serious conversation with him and he was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm really sorry. But in, if I hadn't thought about it, I would have been like, well, I didn't like that you spoke to your ex-wife. Then it, it would have just seemed like I was a jealous bitch. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But it was deeper than that. Yeah. It was like, you're the man. You have to learn to put your feet down when I'm wrong. You see, I'm wrong when she, when it's you know, she's wrong, he's wrong. You need to be able to do those things. Mm -hmm. And you just basically displayed to me that you're going to do whatever and you don't know what's important. Mm -hmm. My time is important right now. So it sounds to me like you're saying the ability to say, hey, you know what? Give me a moment. I need to gather my thoughts. A benefit of that can be you can find more clarity. Yeah, more clarity you know? and getting to the root of yeah. the actual issue. And understanding yourself. Because I don't want to be misunderstood. Right. right. I don't want to point to a surface level issue when mm -hmm. when it's deeper. Yeah. When, I, when, when I thought about it, I was like, what is upsetting me is your behavior. Mm -hmm not hers right right she's doing what she's doing as a mother in distress mm -hmm. talking to the father of her son mm -hmm. like and complaining and blah, blah blah but you don't have the discipline to say hey hold on i have something else 
you know mm -hmm. you're the issue not her yeah, right you know and i didn't want it i i knew that if i had if i just went off and said i don't like that you spoke to her it would have made me sound like i was a jealous right jealous it, it would have come off different. Different. yeah, yeah like, that's point. not the issue yeah that's not the issue but i didn't know that he was the issue yeah. until i thought about it yeah. you know so that's a huge benefit yeah yeah, yeah. like taking the time no, don't react pause yeah, yeah. pause anyway so huge learnings, right? As I'm growing on how to communicate, and everybody's different. Like you'll maybe with a different man, um, if I kind of know that they're short fused, maybe I would have phrased it differently, or I would have not even said it. I don't know, but I'm but, learning to be more vocal and and clearly identify the root issues of things. Yeah, but I think this is a great tool, you know, because like to our listener who raised the question, yeah. how do you navigate through relationships and communication through conflicts? That's a great tool because whether it's a man or a woman, when you're faced with a situation where you your your instinct is, and maybe historically you've reacted instantaneously yeah. and emotionally if you learn how to just take a pause bef and and just don't react and, and then take a moment to step away and assess how you're feeling and why you're upset it you can come back with a more impactful and powerful reasoning to drive for a more productive conversation and not just for yourself but even helping your partner like one of my partners upset i'm like okay so I'm thinking, okay, they're upset about this, but what is the real reason behind it, you know? What is the deeper issue that is causing this thing, you know? Because yeah. there's always something deeper, so I always want to go deeper. And then we kind of talked about, you know, a lot of relationships, you know, they say the number, the top two reasons for why relationships end is like intimacy and Financial. uh, financials, but... You know, like I said to you guys, the root cause of the issue there is communication. Yeah. You know, and trying to resolve things, trying to work together through those issues, you know. So I really, I really think that if you, you can kind of find that common ground talking to your partner and resolving issues together, then the intimacy issues or financial issues can be resolved where you are like helping each other to, to get to where you want to be as a couple. So I was going to ask, because I know you talk about you like to address the issues like right away. Mm -hmm. How do you like to uh, address it? Like, because me, I, I'm i like that too. I, I need to address it right away. Otherwise, Wait, you should know this because this is an R HR thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I like to address it right away because um, in relationships, my mind just t tends to run wild with so many made believe make believe scenarios <laughs> why someone's upset so i need to address it right then and there mm. uh even though we're both really maybe still really upset which yeah. i don't think that's always the right way or maybe i should give him a second to cool down but i like to address it right then and there even though we're really upset but i don't know maybe mm -hmm. i should maybe i should pause and let him yeah take his time I, but I think but you I, can address it right then like, and there, but I, you just have to be clear. I feel like, but I feel like that, I think the reason why I was like that in that relationship was because I was very insecure in that relationship. Oh, yeah. Like I was very, the reason why I, I didn't want to give him that time to, to pause or mm -hmm. think was because I was afraid of losing him. Wow. You mentioned, yeah, that, you in, mentioned in, that yep in the previous episode. Yeah. yeah. You did mention that. So I, I think part of the reason of wanting to address it right away then and there is because mm. of of insecurity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if other other women do this too. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they do. What were you hoping to get out of like addressing it immediately Just and get how it involved? Were you, oh oh but how are you communicating it to them? Like the issue. It's usually, why are you upset? What did I do wrong? <laughs> oh. You know? Okay. But that sounds like you're still clarifying his gaslighting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot you're of it was, Like, you, you cheated. Know, what, what, why are you mad at me? Yeah. Or you, you messed yeah. up. Why are you mad at me? Or, yeah, I mean, when, when you know, when I confronted him about, you know, mm -hmm. um, emotionally cheating, I don't know, what, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, again, like he was dead silent the whole time and then he didn't answer. That is so and weird. Like, that's, a, that's a toxic trait. I know. I know, I know like, people do that. that They're avoiding to it. They're avoiding. And then the, instead of, ans instead of, see, this is how dumb I was. Instead of him answering the question, 
he started accusing me of the, of things and then the minute he, started, he was chucking things back at you yeah yeah and then <laughs> and then with the minute he started accusing me of things i'm over here trying to defend my character um and wow. and so i f i forget about the whole thing and so i'm so focused on resolving this issue of your attack trying to yeah trying to make him feel more secure about whatever attack that he, he yeah, had, had on yeah. you yeah so then yeah. so so then it's just kind of been, always been like that like whenever there was an argument it was like okay let's let's just talk about it right here right now and let's let's resolve it because i always felt like if he left then that was the end of our our relationship wow yeah it was insecurity for, that was for the, for, that was for, the biggest for the way that's I such a it. big mind f though Oh yeah, what yeah. What do you do though? How would you? I mean, that's such a tough situation to be in, to be insecure in in a relationship. Like, yes, how would you effectively communicate if you are insecure in yourself and in this relationship? I, I don't know if it's possible to really communicate. Yeah, communicate. But she didn't. No, I did. I, I yeah. yeah. I, I feel like it's it's really hard because all your focus on is don't leave me. Yeah, that is why when I knew her through that period. I was very sad. <laughs> I was very sad. Everybody was very sad, actually. I think, I think you know, for people who are probably in a similar situation, the best thing you can do is just leave the leave the relationship. Mm. Uh, I I don't think there's I don't think there's communication mm. through through uh, through a relationship where you're insecure in. Yeah. Because if you're insecure, that never gonna is gonna go away, especially if he's not helping reinforce, um, you know, how strong your relationship yeah. is. And you just, just kind of like in the wind going Not forever. Sure, you yeah. know. Yeah. But mom, that's Easter said and done. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. To, I, yeah. The, I know. The, the best word of advice is just really leave the relationship. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> that, that, that but you know, but, but, but why, I think it's yeah. valid. It's so no, hard. I definitely yeah. think it's hard to do that. It is hard, but yeah. I think it's valid uh, for someone with the experience to, to say, I, I've lived through it and like yeah it's yeah, valid no yeah. no I, and I second that leave the relationship yeah. I'm saying but yeah it, I'm it saying hard. leave the relationship but I, I'm saying just don't take as long as I did yeah I'm that saying, conversation still took me five I'm years I'm saying it's hard wow. <laughs> I'm saying it's hard yeah. I'm saying it's hard it's harder it's easier said than done only no, because yeah. like me and our friends we were like oh thank goodness thank god please let her leave and then when she went back we're like oh my god and then after a while we were like we were on the roller coaster yeah and then after a while we were like oh my god yeah yeah. But you're right. You know, I'm someone that has that has lived through that. My advice is to just leave. is yeah. to leave that relationship. Yeah. Whatever courage you have to muster up yeah. to leave that relationship, do it yeah. because don't waste your precious five six years like I did and stay in the relationship just for it to eventually end anyways because you know it wasn't gonna go anywhere at that point anyways you're never gonna feel secure in your relationship if you're already insecure and he's not doing anything to help you in that yeah if you were to talk to yourself you know four years ago yeah. five years ago uh -huh. is there something you could say to convince that older version of you to leave or do you feel like they that older version of you would still not take your word for it and have hung hung out hung through and gone through that lived it out does that make sense like no see because I, I, the thing is that i'm uh i'm a visual learner so i have to see someone that i know do it yes, you, you for me that. to be like okay it, it is something that I it's it's not the end you yeah, know i can realistic. i can do it too yeah. you know so oh, i love i love that like yeah i think you should give that example like yeah like your close girlfriend uh, yeah who was in a long-term relationship and, and it wasn't that great relationship left that relationship yeah and that encouraged you to to yeah. yours as well I because guess. you know you know i was at the point in my life where i felt if i don't just stick it out to the end with this guy there's going to be no one else mm -hmm. i'm mm -hmm. i'm going to be alone forever mm -hmm. even though i'm still alone but uh, <laughs> that's size white being but, alone and happy is better than being that's alone true and suffering that is true that's true it's, it's being alone and happy is better than being alone in a relationship yes yeah, yeah. yeah. relationship yeah. suffering yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that yeah. missed that part yeah that's yeah worse. that's that's mm -hmm. two different that's two different of alone yeah and one is better than the other yep um yeah. But yes, um, if you are someone that needs to see someone do it and is successful, you know, let me be the let yeah. me be the person for you because 
um, our friend, my uh, friend was that person for me to mm. to show me that it's OK that this is not the end. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 end of the relationship is not the end of your life. Yeah. 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 At, at that time, life I thought, goes on. Yeah, yeah. At that time, I thought it was the end of my life. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. What about you, Cash? Any like communication lessons? No, no. Yeah. No, just basically what I talked about earlier, which was, you know, like learning how to better express what it is that you need to give positive reinforcement, to encourage better behaviors rather than being reactive and um, expressing things like a brat where it's just going to make the situation worse. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 You know. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. That was a lot of like really great stories. Thank you guys for sharing. I didn't know I was going to talk this much today, but <laughs> um, that was a lot of fun. Thank you to the viewer who wrote in. And um, we all we encourage you all to write in your comments, topic suggestions down below or uh, on our website. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you.